I am very sorry if you hear rain in the background, so please do try to ignore that. But anyways, this episode, or the last episode of Parasite here. Yes, it's the last episode. So it starts off with, you know, Shinichi just talking about uh, how it's all over, basically. Parasite, there is no sign of parasites. They weren't, like, public decided or anything. You know, the public doesn't know about them much, I should say. You know, over time, parasites, you know, they haven't been attacking humans become because they have adapted to being human more. So, I think pretty much at this point of where, you know, Shinichi is narrating, parasites are basically human now. He did mention that, yes, they do like to eat flesh. They still do like to eat flesh and, like, meat and stuff, but I don't think they'll go as far as eating a human anymore. They'll just eat, like, you know, like, three cheesesteaks or something. And then, Shinichi, we see Shinichi asleep, and, you know, in his dreams, he's talking to Migi. And in his dreams, Migi starts talking about, you know, I'll go to sleep, and Shinichi's like, Okay, you always go to sleep. But Miki says no. This time is different. I want to be asleep for a while. A long time. So inside the dreams, you know, Shinichi's talking about, you know, oh, goodbye. I'm here in your dreams to say goodbye. They, you know, Shinichi's like, no, don't go. And then blase, blase, whatever, whatever. And then Sh Miki mentions, like, it's okay with all the, you know, deaths in the vicinity, I bet a lot of people, plus you, would be sad, and Shinichi's like, yeah, but then his mom appears, and a bunch of other people that died throughout the entire series appeared, and it's like, why are they appearing, and Migi's like, well, these are just, you know, what you see, and, you know, he walks up to the image, or whatever, of Shinichi's mom, and he's like, oh, so this is how you see your mother, which I don't know what he meant by that, so Migi's like, okay, it's time to go. And then Shinichi was like, wait, don't, don't do that. How am I going to fight parasites? And Miki says, well, it's going to be okay since y y you're capable of it. Flash, you won't run into no cars anymore. We're fine. Then Miki says, hey, it would be weird talking to your hand anyway, so see ya. Then Miki mentions that he'll for that Shinichi will forget about his dream anyway, so yeah. And Miki says you should wake up to your regular right hand when you wake up. And when Shinichi woke up, you know, they were, you know, blocking his right arm with like a bunch of stuff like curtains and his blanket and everything. Then we actually see his right hand and it's completely normal. Anyways, let's skip a, I guess a couple, uh, like, the next year or whatever, or the year after, whatever, whatever. We see Morano and her friends are sitting down on the bench, and here comes Shinichi, and I'm guessing Shinichi and Morano are going on a date now. But it seems as though that Morano or her friends are in college, but he, Shinichi was left back. I probably could see why since one he was never in school when he was in school he would walk right out or he would like never finish his work like that one time when a teacher told him if you don't want to be here just go and you know he just straight got up and said okay and left wait I'm confused because I remember he mentioned that he failed college not high school how'd you mess up college I mean, I can see why. So Shinichi goes on a little rant, I'm guessing, about life, parasites, stuff. He goes on for a while about whatever he was talking about. Then Shinichi goes on another little rant about life and how parasites were born on this planet and how we all should help each other and stuff like that. Then he walks off with Murano and oh, guess who? forgot his name, but it was the guy who can sense parasites when they were inside the police place after Reiko died. So Shinichi, while they're in the city, sees the parasite-sensing guy, you know, he, now he, he starts stalking them and 
you know, the final time that, you know, Shinichi sees him, it's like, okay, screw this. So Shinichi just runs after him and leaves Murano by herself. Even though Parasite Sensing Guy goes back around the corner and kidnaps Murano. Oh, by the way, Parasite Sensing Guy is wearing a hat that says Maxim. Isn't that nice? So Parasite Sensing Guy takes Murano on the roof where there's two other people. I guess they were going to do something. So they got up there, they said screw it, so they tried to walk off. But the guy, you know, he saw Parasite Sensing Guy with the knife and you know he walks up he's like hey what are you doing and you know he gets sliced in the neck and I guess he got killed then Parasite says the guy pushed Murano into the other girl that was there and stabbed her in the neck too and I guess she died as well which I'm guessing pretty much shows that he's not playing any games so Parasite I mean Shinichi finally comes up and you know he finds Parasite says the guy and he's holding Murano and Mur Murano is scared speechless. You know, Shinichi is trying his best, trying to, you know, trying to get Murano back desperately. He's trying. Like, hey, let it go. I'll do anything. What is it that you want? Do you want answers? I got questions. What do you need? And he's like, the comps aren't. And then Parasite sends a guy who's like, the, comp the cops aren't stupid. They're going to come find me, hang me, and like, everything else. They, then Parasite says the guy is like, okay, here's how it is. I want some answers from you. Not just you, but I'm talking about a person that is a monster. I'm talking about you. Then, you know, he pretty much spills the beans right, right in front of Murano. So, Shinichi, you know, he says, you know, if you want answers, here we go. You know, she says, you know, I'm not strong anymore, so, you know, uh, so, just, just let Murano go. And, you know, he still doesn't let her go, you know, she, she freaks out now. Wait, Murano then jumps in, and she's like, she, she, call the police. This guy is a screwball. Then she looks at him and is like, how could you even call yourself human? You're a monster yourself. Then Murano goes on about, you know, they've been through so much together, she knows his capabilities, and, you know, and stuff like that. And Parasite says the guy just go, you know, he just laughs. Laughs at all. Then Murano throws these little innuendos about, well, not innuendos, you know, just like, you know, all, she basically says all this time, you know, in life, you've been somewhere else in another world and I've been trying to catch up to you and now I finally have but it seems as though I've gone too far and that gets Shinichi in the fields and you know he bursts towards Murano and first like it's a guy you know to try to save her so then Shinichi reaches out for Murano with his left hand and his left hand gets he gets stabbed in his arm but, you know, he somehow takes like a man and like pimp slaps like Parasite says the guy with his fist and like he's he's one shot it basically. And Murano falls off a building. That's what they made us think. She didn't actually fall off the building. He actually had like a little dream with or vision with Migi there talking about Basically, humans are strange, and we have much potential. And he, Shinichi comes out that vision, and in his hand, he's holding Murano off the side of a building. Now, thank God he saved it, but he still has that knife in his arm.